the title of the talk, Mission Possible. Okay, I think you have some imagination what it will be about. Uh, but maybe you are quite surprised to see the, the Ladybird Beetle. They bring luck, but not only. At least to me, they bring luck, that's for sure. What, what they can do, how they cross, cross the, the frontiers, is that they can walk just normal way. They can walk uh, upside down on the wall and the ceiling. And the mission possible means, can we learn from this creature how to walk on the wall and the ceiling? We cannot do that. Not yet. Okay. Well, biomimetics it was a very nice uh, introduction. Biomimetics is about, uh, again, crossing frontiers from uh, biology to technology. So some people looking on a streamlined body and try to use it for, to improve performance of, uh, of the planes. Um, Okay, this is a big body. We are interested in really, really small structures on the, on the biological um, objects. And we are very interested in evolution. Why evolution is so important for biomimetics? Well, instead of working on one object, it is a good idea to compare many different biological systems in order to find what do they have in common for this kind of function. For example, if you would like to know how the animal adhere to the ceiling, it is a good idea not to look just on the one beetle, but to look on different animals and compare them. Um, and if we find that the same solution appeared many times independently in the evolution, then we can speak about the optimal solution, or maybe just about one single solution. And this is very interesting for engineers, and this is very interesting for the industry to make money. Okay, <laughs> attachment systems. Well, I, told, I, 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 I already told you that they have some, some adhesive structures on the feet. And if you look on this structure in the scanning electron microscope, you can find some little hairs. But these hairs are not just hairs. You will see there is something special about these hairs. But before I tell you what is special about hairs, the question is, which kind of material would we like to develop? If you speak to the people from the industry, they normally say, oh, we would, ha we would like to have something very sticky. There are a lot of sticky materials, there are a lot of super glues. Nowadays, even the cars are made partially, or well, parts of the cars, they stick together by, by the glue. Uh, so sticky is not really special nowadays. But if our question is, would we like to use it for walking on the ceilings? If we would like to use it to adhere extremely fast, not to wait several seconds, like, like with second glue, like with Sekundenkleber, we would like to adhere very fast in 10 milliseconds, and we would like to adhere to various surfaces, and we would like to adhere and release very quickly in millions of cycles, and we would like to develop something which stick to everything, but not to itself. Imagine the feet of the, of the animal putting, putting together, and they st start to stick. We don't want that. Um, okay. Well, it is not a big deal to adhere big body mass to the ceiling. This guy, well, for this purpose we need, of course, a lot of scotch tape, but this guy would stay forever on the ceiling but would be not able to make any step on the ceiling because this is the static situation. In order to master this static situation, um, we have to solve two problems. We have to counterbalance the body weight of the um, animal. By the way, humans are also animals. Um, um, uh, with two forces. We need certain adhesion, stickiness, to prevent falling the body from the ceiling, and we need certain friction to prevent sliding along the ceiling. But imagine if we would like to move on the ceiling, we have to solve two more problems. We have to stick very quickly and reliable to the ceiling, and of course we have to solve contact formation problem, and we have to break contact without too much efforts. Otherwise, it will be energetically, well, very difficult and we will have to spend a lot of energy by adhering and then debonding. It would, would probably not, not, not very efficient system. Well, insects solve this problem. And insects is not just uh, ladybird beetles. Insects um, are very diverse. There is one million of described species, but probably there are even more. And all of them, they have tiny little adhesive pads 
uh, and they can adhere to plant surfaces. And plant surfaces are extremely di diverse too. There are about 200,000 of plant species, and all these animals, they can adhere to all these plant species. So we have two diversity which meet together, and insects have solved the problem which we are interested in. Well, if we look on the feet of many insects, we find that many of them have hairs. And these hairs are pretty much specialized. They are not just hairs, as already mentioned. Um, why do they need hairs? Why you cannot just put something sticky on the, on the food? And, you know, those hairs are, by the way, not really sticky. They stick by their shape. Okay, what is special about hairs? Imagine you have flat surface, and you would like to build good contact with a flat surface. Okay, if you have two flat surfaces meet together, then you have maximum contact. It sticks immediately, so it's very easy. But imagine you would like to stick to rough surface. Then it is a problem, because if you have a stiff plate, uh, then you would probably meet a contact at three highest points, but the rest of the plate will hover over over the gaps, over the valleys of, of the roughness. But imagine if you have hairs, you would immediately build good contact with a flat surface, but you would immediately build good contact with a rough surface. So you can adapt to the roughness by local deformation of your hairs. So hairs would increase the contact formation. Okay, you don't have to know what all these names mean. This is the phylogenetic tree of insects, means we see here some relationship between different insect groups. Um, um, but if we carefully look at this tree, we see that three groups within the insects have the hairs on their feet. This is airwigs, beetles, and flies. Okay? And these three groups develop those hairs completely independently. These hairs here have nothing to do with these hairs and with these hairs. So that means nature solved this problem three times on more or less the same way. So it is a good news for us to make money. Okay. <laughs> um, but the situation is even more complex. Hairs are not hairs in different sexes. So animals have some sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism means different shapes and forms in different sexes. You know that from, from the peacock, uh, males is very different from the female. You know that from, uh, <clears throat> from, uh, from spiders, females are normally larger and also feed on, on the males. And also there is some sexual dimorphism in, uh, in the human beings. So females have some anatomical differences from the males. Uh, what about our... Our animals, well, they look very similar on the first sight. If we look more carefully, they look still similar. But <laughs> if you take the microscope with a big power and look at the feet of the female, they have hairs which have such a spatula-like uh, tips. But in the male, it is different. The males, they have such a mushroom-shaped contacts. And you can assume what is the reason for having this kind of hairs is to stick to the very shiny surface of the female. So we know it is a good solution to adhere to the, to the flat surface. So the question is what about performance? Is there any performance between male and the female? So then we decided to take a centrifuge and uh, measure forces. Okay. So, by the way, we, did, we didn't do this experiment just on flat surface. We did it for, on many different surfaces with different roughness. We, what we find out is that males are much better on the flat surface, which has no roughness, but a female is much better on the rough surface. So, what we can learn from that, if you would like to build a system to adhere to the flat surface, we have to learn from the male. If we would like to build a system to adhere to rough surface, we have to learn from the female. So there is, there is some, um, well, some specialization. Okay, so we started with the male, and this is the mimic. 
we developed together with the company from uh, Holzgerling, which is by Stuttgart, and you see certain similarity between the biological structure and technical structure. So the structure are very small, it is just 30 microns. It is really, really small, and well, this is the bridge between biology and the technology. So what we implemented, or what we learned from the animal for the technology, First of all, we subdivided one big contact into many contacts and we uh, put our features in such a hexagonal pattern, exactly like in the case of, of the animals. It is hexagonal pattern for the highest packing density. And what we did again is we uh, put additive thin plate-like head and joint-like neck to adapt to certain surface irregularities. Even, even smooth surface is not perfectly smooth, so you have, you have to tolerate some waviness and so on. So we actually mimic the male beetle. What about stickiness? How did we improve our typical material we used um, for this kind of, um, um, of, um, of technology compared to our, uh, sorry, compared to our structured material. So the improvement was about six times. So you take just a simple silicon rubber, make this structure on that, and you increase adhesion, stickiness, six times. So you can do it of course not with any material, but with many other materials, so you can change the adhesive properties by just making proper structure. What it is good for? Of course, the company would like to um, sell it for completely different purposes, like um, adhesion uh, in a human body, uh, like um, um, uh, having materials for uh, putting Christmas decoration which is not falling down every time, <laughs> like typical pressure sensitive adhesives, but you can make some toys, and these toys we made many years ago with the first version of this material um, together with the, with the people from Case Western Reserve University in the United States. Um, this is a robotic group and they build a robot which used this first version of material to climb up the wall. So if you look carefully, the robot is not sticking like uh, with a scotch tape, so it can slide over, and you see that the, the single feet, they jump out of the contact, very simple, uh, not like with a scotch tape, very easy. So, and it is like 140 gram in dynamic process. So, what you can do, you can make this kind of pick and drop systems. Again, this is, oh sorry, this is a toy, uh, which, is, uh, which is also weighed like 100 grams, and uh, the area we used here uh, is about one square centimeter. You can repeat it many thousands of cycles without washing out, without using any, any under pressure. This is just material you can use for any kind of pick and drop processes in the real, in the real world. Well, you can get a guy on the ceiling. So this guy adhering, of course, to glass, because I already mentioned we learn from the male. So the next step is to learn from the female, because we would like that the guy don't use this, this shiny surface, but the guy must adhere to the rough, rough ceiling. So and it, it can be done only by the female-like structure. This is still ongoing research. Well, this is actually not the entire story. There is something new we explored actually in the last year. Well, this is terrestrial beetle. These guys normally walking on the dry surface and perform well on the dry surface, but if you put them in aquarium, and this is really aquarium, you believe me, <laughs> um, that these animals can also stick to the, to the surface underwater by using little air bubble on the feet this air bubble is stabilized by these numerous hairs, and the air bubble is working like an adhesive pad underwater, because air generates capillary forces underwater, which is very unusual, which is, sounds very crazy, but it is the fact. We can discuss it later on, what does it mean? <laughs> but you can use the same material actually underwater. You can improve stickiness underwater. Well, and even that, not the whole story. The whole story of this talk is that we have to explore 
diversity of real nature. And we can learn a lot for technology about the specific coloration pattern, specific physical colors. We can learn something about how to hold air underwater. We, have to we can learn something about maintenance of thermal balance. We can learn something about food grinding, aerodynamic activity, sound generation, body cleaning, just by changing surface structure on technological systems. And I think it is a good point to say we still need classical organismic biology for doing that. So, long life biology. Thank you so much. Questions?